Okay, so uh, here, Amy, this is, the PGTA is extremely inaccurate. Uh, we were the first to really do uh, genetic testing, really, on embryos in the United States, and it was for cystic fibrosis in uh, 1994, uh, and uh, we're very experienced with embryo biopsy and testing. So here's what it is. If it's a single gene defect, like cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy or Tay Sachs or Huntington's or any of the, of the common single gene defects that you or your husband might be a carrier of, it's extremely accurate because every cell in that embryo that we biopsy is going to have the same gene uh, mutation. And we can avoid a, having a, a child who's diseased with any of those genetic diseases. But if you're routine, do, doing routine genetic testing, it's a misnomer. All you're doing is counting chromosomes. And it's very inaccurate because the early embryo has a variety of aneuploid and euploid embryos or cells, I mean. And so you, you really can't, you can't be sure if what you biopsied is representative of the rest of the embryo. And so actually the error rate has been computed to be about 40%. And in control studies with embryos that were tested from the same patient that were tested and found to be... Uh, you know, uh, normal versus a transfer of embryos that were not tested, there was no difference in success rate. And so you can see that what would happen is you have many embryos that are diagnosed as abnormal that really would have been a baby. And so you lower the success rate by doing the PGTA. Now, both of those monosomy blastocysts that you have, I would transfer to you because if it's correct, and they're a monosomy, you're just not going to get pregnant. There's no harm done. They're not going to be abnormal babies. And if they are incorrect, which is often the case with monosomy, if it's incorrect, then you might be throwing away an embryo that could have been a baby. So I think for a 43-year-old woman, it, it's probably a mistake to reduce her success rate even further by doing the PGTA. But if she demands it, we're very accurate about what we do. The inaccuracy is not in our technology. The inaccuracy comes from the variety of aneuploid and euploid uh, cells that are in that very early embryo. And normally the euploid cells of 120 cells are going to outgrow the aneuploid cells and result in a healthy baby. But if you have more aneuploid cells than that, then they'll outgrow the euploid cells and you'll have a miscarriage or not get pregnant. Uh, but that's that, unfortunately, that diversity of cells in the early embryo, normal and abnormal, that make it impossible to be accurate with PGTA. So that's uh, the best answer. I think, I think if you're 43, what we should do is do a mini IVF protocol to try to get better quality eggs and embryos and uh, store them up before you become 44 and 45 and it gets worse. And also, uh, you can send these blastocysts to us and we'll transfer them also. But before you get older, it'd be a good idea to try to get more embryos, uh, day three embryos, actually, with mini IVF. I don't know what you mean by one cycle left. I don't know if you mean the insurance will cover. I don't know. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. But you're doing the right thing. I mean, we do the mini IVF to get whatever we can before you get older. And uh, at some point, you'll stop doing that one way or another, uh, finances or exhaustion or just emotions. Uh, or, but for whatever reason, eventually, you'll stop collecting those day three embryos. Um, but in the meantime, let's not throw away those blasts because they could very well be babies.